Okay, let's learn about histogram of oriented gradients, also known as hog, also known as hog descriptor. So we saw in our previous coding example that hog descriptors is nothing but a process of converting our image into some kind of a feature vector, which is required for machine learning algorithm, which is which happens to be SVM. In this particular case so we saw that the process of getting an image which is nothing but a two-dimensional uh, array of pixels into three channels into first we get a crop we crop out the face of the cougar that is what we want to detect so and then we get a hog descriptors right so basically what we did was here uh, from this image we had the bounding box right uh, that was the that was given to us along with the image using this bounding box which is nothing but the coordinates of the face we draw the bounding box around the cougar face then we crop out only that part and then get this image and then this image we convert into a compact representation called hog descriptor which is nothing but a 3780 dimensional vector which we are going to feed it to the machine learning algorithm so that is what we saw now let's go into detail on how this vector of 3780 dimension gets generated so it's a multi-step process we will go step by step so step one is basically a pre-processing an image. So here what we do is we have this image of a cougar. Uh, then uh, we have these bounding boxes that were given to us, which has the, uh, uh, the x, y coordinates of uh, the bounding box, right? Uh, so we use those x, coordinate, x, y coordinates to draw the bounding box, right? So, so this is basically height which is h here uh, this is nothing but the width which is w here x is so let's say if this is the x axis and this is the y axis x is the this distance y is this distance right so using these four coordinates we can draw this uh, uh, bounding box around the uh, cougar face and then we crop out that cougar face into another image, usually uh, of 100 by 200 size. Uh, we, we basically compute that image. And if the image is of not that size, uh, then we resize that image because usually if we resize the image where uh, uh, the height is double the width, that works well for the machine learning algorithm in this particular case. Uh, so this will resize to 64 by 128 right and that's what we use in our uh, step two so step one processing is uh, crop out the cougar face which you want to detect and resize the image to 64 by 128 okay the next step is we need to compute the gradient so why compute the gradient if you take a look at this Cougar image, there is a lot of information which we really don't need, right? So, for example, if you see this background over here, for example, if you see all this background, uh, which we don't need, right? It is not really conveying any information. So, what we do is we compute a gradient, right? A gradient is nothing but a directional change in the image intensity. So what we do is um, we take the image, we start scanning from left to right and then from top to bottom, right? And let's say we, we, we take a smaller area like this, right? Like the three by three, uh, 
3 by 3 area right and in this 3 by 3 area we monitor how much the intensity has changed as we move from left to right and top to bottom and that intensity is captured into the gradient so as a part of and we we do same thing as we uh, and then we move this patch to the right we repeat the process then once one this uh, rotation is finished we move this patch down and then repeat the process so and we compute the gradient by convolving it with filters called Sobel filters so the result of this uh, uh, computing gradient is we get only the pixels which in which indicates the change in the image intensity right so as you can see wherever the image intensity is changing right from the background to this uh, uh, ear of the cougar or uh, the mouth of the cougar that part the intensity is high right and rest of the part intensity is low so this ends up in drawing a contour or the highlights where the image intensity is suddenly changing and that part we are interested in uh, capturing because that really represents the change in the image intensity which is nothing but called a gradient Right. So the way to do that is we use a, a convolution operator that I just explained earlier where we take this Sobel filters uh, which are predefined 3 by 3 matrix horizontal and vertical direction and then we move them from left to right and top to bottom and convolve with the pixels of the image and compute the gradient and this is the code for that. So we read a uh, uh, image uh, using OpenCV. This will give me a three-dimensional, basically a three-channel uh, and two dimension. Each channel is two-dimensional array of pixel intensities. We convert it to grayscale. Then we compute the gradient using CV2.sobel method in x and y direction. And the overall gradient has two things. One is called so gradient has two attribute. One is the magnitude which represents the intensity the actual magnitude and the other one is a direction which indicates in which in which direction the intensity is changing and we compute that uh, magnitude and direction and we can print it out and you can plot it so what we saw was uh, in the previous direction this is the magnitude of the gradient that we can plot and this is what we will use in subsequent steps Now the next point, the next step is, once we have this gradient, the next step is we compute the something called histogram. So as you saw, this image size is 64 by 128, which means it has 64 uh, rows and it has no 64 uh, 128 uh, rows and 64 columns, right? What we do is we divide this image into 8 by 8 patch, right? So that means this will have uh, 8 uh, columns, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 16 rows, right? So I'm going to draw like this, okay? Uh, so in each patch is basically nothing but 8 by 8 pixel array. Okay? That's what we do first. Once we have this 8 by 8 array, right? Uh, we compute gradient. We know the, we compute the gradient for this patch. So this patch will look something like this, right? So if you know the uh, magnitude and directions, so as you can see, if you plot it uh, and expand this, it will look something like this, right? In uh, basically visually, right? This will look something. So this is an eight by eight patch. Okay. So what we do is for this eight by eight patch, we compute. Uh, magnitude of gradient which will be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 
one two three four five six seven eight and also two three four five six seven we can drop this side seven and eight so okay this is eight by eight so this is a magnitude and then we have a direction this also will be 8 by 8 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and again there will be 8 rows 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 we can draw here so this also this also will be an 8 by 8 and this is the direction okay so the magnitude will represent the intensity which will be in the range of 0 to 255 and this 8 by 8 direction will be the angle of that uh, patch for example this uh, intensity patch could be oriented in the direction of minus 45 or plus 45 so this angle will range from 0 to 180 degrees for each pixel right uh, so we compute these two pixels which are nothing but magnitude and direction for each 8 by 8 pixel right so once we do that, uh, what we will get is, um, let me draw it again. Okay. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to, I'm not going to draw everything. I'll judge a few examples. So this is eight by eight magnitude. This is 8 by 8 direction. Okay. Again, it will be 8 rows and there will be 8 columns. 8 columns. Okay. So now what we do is we combine these two values into 9 beans. Okay. Which, which means. Uh, each of the beans represents angles. This is angle from 0, 20, 40, sorry, 40, 60, 80, up to 160. Okay. So now what we do is we map uh, these values into these nine beans. Okay. So for example, let's say we have a pixel here whose value is uh, let's say 5 and the angle is 80 okay so this value and this pixel will that means the 5 will go into this pixel right yeah. now let's say we have the another uh, value called 4 and it has an angle of 10 that means that value needs to be equally distributed between these two so half of this will go here because uh, uh, angle 10 is midway between 2 to 20. So 4 will be divided into 2 and again it will be divided into 2. Right? So we keep doing that and we keep adding the values. So eventually what will happen is eventually what tends to happen is Once we do that, you can plot a histogram of those nine beans, right? So you will get a histogram like this for each of those nine beans, like zero, twenty. You can you can sum up the values, and you can calculate, right? Something like this, you will get a histogram up to one sixty, right? So this is the process of computing a histogram from the gradient. So basically this represents what is the distribution of each angle and the corresponding magnitude in a specific direction. For example, as you can see, there is a lot of uh, pixels around 0, 0 and 180 degree at the end. This means in this particular case, uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, pixel gradient which has an angle of zero, right? Yeah. 
that's what it so we saw earlier uh, how an 8 by 8 block is converted into uh, so we saw how 8 by 8 block was converted into 36 by 1 vector right so normally uh, the next process is normalization okay so normalization is so let's say if this is the vector which has the value of 10 20 up to 36 the normalization is uh, dividing all of uh, each of this member so let's say if this is x we divide uh, each of the value by uh, a factor which is the uh, root mean square of all the values right? that's the process of normalization but this normalization is not done per 8 by 8 patch instead that what they do is they collect 16 by 16 patch so if each each patch if each each if each patch is 8 by 8 they cover like uh, uh, 16 by 16 patch and then uh, for 16 by 16 patch they normalize it right so so for 16 by 16 patch uh, and what they do is once they and for 16 by 16 patch they do the normalization right So, and what they do is once this block is finished, uh, and remember this is uh, uh, this whole image size is 64 by 128. Okay, always remember this. So, and then what they do is they take next, then they move the square to the right and they take next 16 by 16 block. Right, so these are overlapping, and then they, they take next 16 by 16 block. So they keep repeating the process by moving the 16 by 16 from left to right and top to bottom and compute the vector at each point. So if you calculate uh, how many 16 by 16 patches are there. So if you move to the left, there will be 7 uh, uh, columns and 15 rows of 16 by 16 patches. right? Remember they are overlapping, so you need to include an overlapping way also. So there will be seven by uh, there will be seven columns and fifteen rows of sixteen by sixteen, right? And for each sixteen by uh, so there will be total patches will be seven into fifteen will be one o five, yes. And for each one o five, which is a patch of sixteen by sixteen, will compute a vector of. Uh, uh, instead of nine, they will now for each each eight by each batch of eight has a vec nine bits vector. So for four patches will be thirty six. So for each patch, if there are thirty six uh, 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 a vector of size thirty six is created, then total number of uh, elements in the vector is one o five into 36 right so that will become 3780 right so this is the dimension of the final vector again let me repeat so we'll have we have original image size of 64 by 128 we compute a patch of 16 by 16 block for each 16 by 16 we compute uh, uh, a 9 bit vector which means it will become 36 because there are four 8 by 8 blocks in it and then we move the area to one row and one column at a, at a time to the right and to the from top to bottom and from left to right so uh, we end up covering seven 16 by 16 patches in the horizontal direction and 15 uh, 16 by 16 patches in the vertical direction so there will be 105 patches total in and each patch of 16 maps to a uh, bin of 36 that we saw and the total number of uh, uh, dimensions for the final vector will be 105 to 36 which happens to be a 3780 vector so this is how we compute a 3780 feature descriptor uh, for an image and this really represents a contact uh, compact representation of the image that we use in the DLIB library